Um, we use what's called a lure lock syringe. You could use this to inject stuff into your bloodstream if you really, really wanted to. Um, but the idea is that it, the needle comes separate. And we have needles which we use. Not to inject people. These are called dispensing needles. I call them blunt tip needles because if you look at I'm going to let you pass this around now. If you just sort of tap that, you'll notice that that isn't going to penetrate anything unless you really, really push it. Go ahead and hold that still just for a moment so I can, there we go. So, okay. Good. Now I have the long dispensing needles. There are short ones as well, but those are going to come in very handy in this prep. Okay? We have a couple more pieces of material. Um, so, this, a question. So, go right the, ahead. the electrodes come with the goop on them already, but that's insufficient. You have to add more goop? Well, yeah, that, that's, it's one of these sort of depends situations. Okay. In my experience, getting that active electrode set and doing it well usually requires augmenting the gel just a little bit. Okay. Okay? Um, when you're sort of out here on the open, like on the skin on the back of your hand for doing EKG, and there's very little hair, for example, I, a lot of times you can just slap those right on there and that's going to be good enough. The problem with it is that the amount of electrical current from your heart or from your muscles is relatively large relative to the amount of electrical change from the brain. Okay, um, Where every time the heart beats, it's like a shout. Every time a group of neurons fires underneath your skull, um, it's like a whisper. And not only is it like a whisper, but it's a whisper heard through a really thick concrete wall, which is your skull, and then, you know, all the muffled stuff on top of it, all the hair, okay? You remember the, uh, what was it, the Dr. Seuss, uh, Horton Hears a Who, right? And all the Who's in Whoville have to go, we are here, we are here, we are here, to break through. And, you know, only Horton could hear it. Uh, it's a little bit like that, I mean, except in the place of the Who's of Whoville, you have little neurons teaming up. They group together dynamically, moment to moment, in order to execute functions, to do jobs of one description or another. And as on the basis of that teamwork, they generate collective e uh, uh, electrical potentials that can just barely make it out onto your scalp. Okay? So, what do we do? Well, the name of the game is that electron flow. It's getting the electrons off the skin and into the wire. And the last bit of the barrier is the skin itself. You've studied a little human physiology, a little bi biology in school, maybe? What do we call the skin? What's the thing the bi biologists call skin? Anybody? Epidermis. Epidermis. Well, there's dermis and epidermis, epidermis being that very outer layer. That's right. And epidermis, uh, for those of us who are aging a little bit, you start noticing it starts to look a little dry and scaly. If you haven't put your lotion on, and I haven't yet, so. Uh, but the idea there is that even very young skin will have quite a bit of that, and that stuff resists electron flow, okay? So what do we do to promote that electron flow? Well, the first thing we do is we do a little buff, okay? I'm going to hand one of these to you, and Chris, you can have one too. Everybody else has sort of done this. This is, uh, these. I like to call them green scrubby pads. They're made by 3M. You know them as the thing that you scrub the the, the uh, burnt-up grease on your plastic pans at night. Yes, maybe a little bit. You've used these before. Uh, we have used sandpaper. We've, uh, I actually, the guy who ran me the other night, he had little fingertip things with pumice on it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's what I should get. That's the good stuff. But anyway, I mean, it's the same idea is that essentially just sort of run this back and forth across the back of your skin. Now, if you really push down, if you really push down, you could abrade the skin enough to make it bleed. Okay? But what we do is we're fairly gentle. All we do is we just do it gently, and you're going to develop enough skill doing this to know how much pressure to put. Basically, as you drag that across the skin, it should grab a little bit. Okay? Now, having done that, pause, Chris. I'm going to do editing later. I oh, barely okay. know what I'm doing with this thing. Go ahead and, <laughs> go ahead and show that you guys are practicing. There we go. Very good. Well, you have a lot of dead skin cells just there, so it's not hurting you any. I can scrub hard on people's palms and then go. All right. Sorry about that. Having 
made a mess of our skin, we use a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Nice little dispenser here. And then wipe the site that you've already done. Okay? And here, I'm going to let you do that to yourself, okay? So you're getting rid of the outermost layer of dead skin cells, and then you're cleaning them away along with some of the oil you're getting rid of with the alcohol. That's exactly right. The oil is another thing that causes the skin to resist that electron flow. Now, if you've done that right, and you look at your skin, it should look kind of pinkish. It gets like a rosy hue, mm -hmm. as we like to say. Like that. What's that? <laughs> My hands are already Yeah, inside. okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that means your skin is just about ready. It should be uh, 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 prepped enough, as they say, to uh, make a nice conductive bridge. Mm -hmm. And that's the point at which you would slap on the electrode, the peel and stick electrode, over the spot there. Okay, now, we have different locations. Remember, we've got three things to hook up, okay? One is a ground. Which one's ground? Testing now? Black, Black. Black. Black is ground. What's the white one? Negative. Negative. No, what did I call it? You said, oh, hmm. you said minus. Didn't I call it reference? Mm -hmm. Did I say the word? Yeah, you did. I thought I did, see? And what did I call this one, the red one? Positive. Positive, but what's the other one? I called it active. Okay. So this is the one which we put over the site that we want to record from, if you will. Okay? Now I'm going to use so Mike, my skull gonna, here. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt. If Go you're going to remain standing, I'm going to back this up a little so that I can get you and the skull. Oh, you, okay. In, why in I fact, Greg, why don't down. I switch with you? Well, you can stand if you want. I just wanted to make sure. Can you do it I sitting should, there? I, sh I can do it sitting. Okay. Then we'll continue doing it the way we were. I'm going to use, uh, use my little model here to illustrate the placements for one channel. By the way, this whole thing is one channel, and each one of these is marked CH1 for channel 1, CH2 for channel 2, CH3, and CH4, okay? Each one of those is a potential source of information about something that's going on in the body. So let's just say we're going to use this guy to do the right frontal, okay? How would we do that? Well, if the skin were in place over the skull and then some hair, uh, we would abrade the skin here. Now, the problem is with hair is that it's in the way all the time, okay? And this little routine with the abrading pad doesn't work in the hair, okay? So when we want to do EEG, we actually have to have an alternate means, okay? What I use is this guy. Now, the tip of the dispensing needle is fairly finely ground to be a nice, sharp right angle, almost like a chisel point, if you will. And what that means is that if you put it on the surface of the skin, if this were my scalp, uh, at, at a shallow angle, maybe 10 or 15 degrees, and then just made the little circular motions back and forth like that, you are abrading the skin. Is that commonly done, or is that your own innovation? This is my own innovation. Okay. Now, the nice thing about this is that we don't have to try to do this. And second of all, we're just not going to get it clean of oil. So we just leave the alcohol out of it, okay? But the procedure will be like this. You will, using a system which I'll teach you in a minute, find the right spot on the head, okay? You don't just sort of eyeball it. There are some procedures here. And you want to try to get as much reliability, that is placement to placement, subject to subject. You want to have it as close to the same spot on each person's head as you can get. Basically, you're going to find your little spot, make a mark or put your finger there, and you're going to abrade it. Actually, here, let me give you this. Okay? You're going to be nice here. Go ahead and grab that. So let's just say that the active site was right at the tip, and I would abrade it. I'd go back and forth, maybe 20 seconds, right and left, 20 seconds, and then I'd go in a counterclockwise motion, maybe 20 seconds, and then I'd go in a clockwise motion, about 20 seconds. Okay, so I've done the best job I can to abrade with the tip of the needle. Now, holding the needle in the place, because it's pointing to the spot that I want, you place that, your partner places that electrode right over it. The black disc should go right over the tip of the needle. Can we all see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're not, you're just not.